Hola, ¿cómo están? ¿Bien? Yo también. En la clase de hoy, today, in today's class, we're going to learn very common and useful expressions if you happen to go away into a Spanish-speaking country or if you work in the tourist industry in the U.S. and your clients are Spanish native speakers. So you can do, with this lesson, you can learn many words, expressions, questions, and answers that might come in handy if you are not ready to travel to a Spanish-speaking country, like you didn't have time to study enough and you need to get, you know, 24 hour, the phrases that can get you around. Because it is nice, though in the tourist industry, many, many people will speak English, that's not guaranteed. And also, it's also nice from you to make an effort and learn Spanish so you can communicate with the locals. Well, let's start. La primera oración es, where is the office? ¿Dónde está la oficina de? What is, where is the office of? So whatever the office you're looking for, right? Could be auto rental, could be immigration, could be the tourist office because you want information. So you're going to ask, ¿Dónde está la oficina de? And whatever the office you're looking for. You could also ask for a place. ¿Dónde está el Hotel Colón? <laughs> el Hotel Colón is like the hotel that many Spanish courses use. I don't even know why. I guess, I don't know. ¿Dónde está el hotel? I would call it Benito Juárez. It's more common in Mexico. <laughs> ¿Dónde está el restaurante La Hacienda? No? Oh, so hundreds of them. <laughs> well, la siguiente es. I have a reservation. Tengo una reservación. Tengo una reservación. Uh, and I, I'm sorry, I, I forgot to write something here. So I'm just going to add it right now because I don't think it's a big deal. We can do it. Tengo una reservación a nombre de. A nombre de, under the name, and then your name, okay? Tengo una reservación a nombre de. De Juan. Tengo una reservación a nombre de Juan. Tengo una reservación a nombre de Ana. Tengo una reservación a nombre de eh, Juan. Whatever your name is. Hmm? Uh, tengo una reservación a nombre de... I have a reservation under the name. And then you state your name. <laughs> I see. Redundant, Anna. Of course, you're going to state your name. You're not going to state your alias or your, your, like, your name you go for. Anyway, gracias. I mean, I know you're going to say, oh, no, come on. You're really going to put gracias in this lesson? And the reason I'm doing it is because when you're away, you're going to encounter many sellers, many people who ask you questions, who want to sell something to you. Right, especially if you venture out of the resort, yes, and they're gonna see you. You're gonna stick out. Hey, do you wanna go on tour? Do you wanna go to the island? Do you wanna go to the reef? Do you wanna go to the uh, this? And do you wanna go to paradise? All sorts of things they are going to try to sell, right? So sometimes you don't just wanna go like, like looking at the floor, so you don't make eye contact, so they don't see you. Sometimes, sometimes you have to actually. Look around and say, gracias, o no gracias, gracias, o no gracias, next time, para la próxima. You never know when, but you can say that for the next time. <laughs> next time, para la próxima. You can say, gracias, para la próxima, o no gracias, para la próxima. Muy bien. Ahora ya sabes, when you go around, you know, instead of looking down and try to avoid those sellers or whatever, whoever is trying to like sell something to you, you're going to say, gracias para la próxima. No gracias para la próxima. Bien? Thanks or no thanks. Next time. La siguiente es, when you enter a place, they are going to ask you for a ticket, usually. Ticket, boleto, ticket. Su boleto, su boleto, señor, su boleto, señora, su boleto, enséñamelo. Show it to me, enséñamelo, ¿no? Su boleto. You can say, here is my ticket. Aquí está mi boleto. Aquí está mi boleto, like a good student, you know? Here is my homework. Aquí está mi tarea. 
You can say, aquí está mi boleto, ¿sí? Ya lo compré, mm, lo tengo. I'm not trying to avoid the entrance fee. Muy bien. La siguiente es, ¿cuánto me cobra A? So that's for a taxi, a cab, a taxi. The reason is, often when you are away, well, you also get chosen to be charged more. So it's very important that before you go into a taxi, you ask how much. Otherwise, they will charge you a lot more. I mean, they will all, all, already charge you more than they'll charge me, <laughs> right? Because if I travel in a Spanish-speaking country, because I can make a negotiation and say, oh, come on, I'm not foreigner, I'm almost from here, see? But you might get chosen to be charged more. You cannot avoid this. It's a fact. But you can diminish the damage. <laughs> I mean, I'm not saying be cheap and it's like, no, no, less, less, less. No, because people live from that. That's their work. They get paid from that. They live based on that. So I don't want to go like being cheap all over with the taxi cabs. Of course not. But a fair fair. <laughs> so we'll say, ¿cuánto me cobra a? How much would you charge me to? And then... You show the address or you tell the name of the hotel. Often they know already all the hotels and all the places you're going to be. Like they can, they say, oh, yeah, no, I know, no, I know this place. I was born in this place. No? Very, very proud. So you're going to say, how are you going to say? Oiga, señor, ¿cuánto me cobra a? How much would you charge me to? And then show the address or say the address. Tell the name of the place. ¿Cuánto me cobra a? Muy importante to ask this question before you get into the cab. Now, if you've forgotten that you're already sitting, you still have time. It hasn't start moving. It started moving. Okay. La siguiente es, could you wait for me? Could you wait for me? Right? It could be to a friend or it could be to somebody you do not know. In which case, we have two ways. You could say, ¿me puedes esperar? Me puedes, la S, como dice la mano, la S, ¿sí? Con las dos manos, so you don't forget. La S, me puedes esperar, it's a casual way and informal. You may use it with your friend or with somebody you're acquainted with. If you don't know the person, let's say it's a cab driver and you haven't um, really started a conversation, it's a serious ride, you don't want him to talk to you, you're like Elaine when you should pretend to be deaf like so the taxi cab doesn't talk to you. So you're going to say, me puede esperar, a more formal way, me puede esperar, which is, could you wait for me? You could say, me puede esperar cinco minutos, un minuto, diez minutos, cinco segundos, depends on how long you want that person to wait. This person might say, ¿cuánto tiempo? No, ¿cuánto tiempo? How long? ¿Cuánto tiempo? But how long you could use it in many, many ways. ¿Cuánto tiempo? Sí. I'm going to wait. How long? ¿Cuánto tiempo? Muy bien. Uh, ¿Cuánto tiempo? It's also you could, like, with, with uh, admiration marks, exclamation marks, you can say, ¿cuánto tiempo? See, when you see somebody and you see like, oh, cuánto tiempo, means we haven't seen each other in a long time. Cuánto tiempo, but not cuánto tiempo, but cuánto tiempo. Yes, different intonation for different contexts. Muy bien. Ahora, a very useful one is, where can I get whatever you want to get, right? When, when... When you're on holiday, when you're out, uh, away from your house, you tend to crave things, feel like uh, different. You feel different, I think. So you say, where can I get? And whatever you want. So you say, ¿Dónde puedo conseguir? Now, don't be scared. This word is very easy to pronounce. It just looks complicated, but it's not. ¿Dónde puedo? ¿Dónde puedo? ¿Dónde puedo conseguir? Con, con, 
like a con artist, con, se, se, gir, gir, no weir, ¿ok? ¿Entendiste? No weir. Si dices weir, te doy una en la mano. Pum, pum, pum. ¿Dónde puedo conseguir? ¿Dónde puedo conseguir agua? Una botella de agua, bottled water. ¿Dónde puedo conseguir una botella de vino? Ay, por ejemplo, ¿dónde puedo conseguir una paleta de hielo? ¿No? Ahora, ahí tengo paletas, las paletas mexicanas, les dice, ¿no? Las paletas mexicanas, Mexican popsicles, las paletas de hielo. Ay, yo la vez pasada le pregunté a una señora, estaba en Tasco y le pregunté, ¿dónde puedo conseguir paletas? Paletas de hielo, ¿no? Ah, sí, allá está la Michoacana, que aquí, que te vas, camina, sigues, ahí está. Caminé como 20 minutos para conseguir una paleta, pero se me antojó una paleta. Entonces yo dije, ¿dónde puedo conseguir paletas de hielo? Tengo ganas, I feel like it. Tengo ganas, I feel like having. Da, muy bien. Ahora ya sabes, ¿dónde puedo conseguir? This is a very... I, I think a very useful phrase. Where, ¿Dónde puedo conseguir? Where can I get whatever you ask the person? Right? Now, the other one is eight. ¿Aceptan tarjeta de crédito, débito, efectivo? Is, do you accept credit, debit, card, or cash? No. ¿Aceptan tarjeta de crédito? ¿Aceptan tarjeta de débito? ¿Aceptan efectivo, I was going to say, aceptan tarjeta de efectivo, it's like you have a card cash, <laughs> that would be funny, then it's a debit card, and whatever, just jokes, stop jokes, aceptan tarjeta de crédito, débito, efectivo, now you probably think, Ana, what do you think, that we're just going to go away to spend, like, you know, like, swipe by the card, well, you might need it, right, because maybe you don't have cash, they're just sitting already at a place, and you don't have cash, you want to ask them, or, Maybe the opposite, you have only credit card, etc. So, this comes in handy in that context. La siguiente va a ser, ¿a qué hora sale el ferry? At what time does the ferry leave? ¿A qué hora sale el ferry? ¿A qué hora sale, you could say, ¿a qué hora sale el último ferry? At what time does the, uh, does the last ferry leave? You know, the last one to leave. ¿A qué hora sale? It's like, at what time it comes out? At what time does the ferry or bus or tour leave? ¿A qué hora sale el autobús? El autobús, the bus, el autobús. Now, often you want to go on a tour. They want to take you to the island, to the other island. And it's like everywhere where you're not. Like, you're already somewhere you like, but you want to go to another place you want to see, right? You're going to see everything. So you say, ¿a qué hora sale el tour? ¿no? Para ver las tortugas, to see the turtles. More, they should call it to disturb the turtles more than to see them. ¿A qué hora sale el tour para molestar a las tortugas? You see, you could say that. La siguiente es, oh, I'll be back later. Maybe you don't want to do whatever you're going to do at that precise moment. So you, or maybe you never or you don't intend to come back ever. You just want to get rid of that situation. So you can just say, regreso más tarde. I'll come back later. Are you going to come back later? Well, you're not signing a contract, so it's okay. You can use it, you know, if it's true or if it's not. Regreso más tarde. But if you are not the only one, see, if you're with people and you are a group, you could use the plural and say, Regresamos más tarde. Ay, sí, sí me gusta, pero no sé, no estoy seguro. I'm not sure, no estoy segura. If you're a woman, I'm not sure, no estoy seguro. If you're a man, regreso más tarde. Sí, digo, regreso más tarde. Muy bien. Vamos a ver las siguientes. Las siguientes oraciones are nice Nice things you could say through the, throughout the day with the people you encounter. So, a common way to salute somebody is, hello, hola, en español, hola, hola. You go around and you keep saying, hola, hola, hola. But you may notice that locals or native Spanish speaker, speakers also say, good morning, good night, good evening. 
And amongst us, we say sometimes, buenos dias, buenos dias. Now, I know you may find this a little bit more, um, a little bit difficult because of the vowel. So you prefer hola, short, but sometimes, you know, it's nicer to say buenos dias, if it's good morning, buenos dias, buenos dias. So, bue, repite, bue, bue, nos, di, di, as. Muy bien. Buenos días. And the same for buenas tardes. Except that the instead of O, it's going to be an A. So you'll say buenas, buenas, buenas tardes. Buenas tardes. Don't try to shorten it. It's not short. It's nice and long. So you'll say buenas tardes. Buenas tardes and slow. Buenas tardes. What, what did he say? Buenas tardes. Buenas tardes. Así relajado, ¿no? Alguien que estás de vacaciones. Buenas noches. But at night time, when it's dark, you're going to say buenas noches. You know, sometimes, actually, we say buenas. 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 And we don't end with tardes or noches. We just say, oh, buenas. It's casual. You know, it's not, it's very, it's very casual, but it's a common way to say, you might hear it. Buenas, buenas, instead of hola, we say buenas, buenas, which means buenas tardes o buenas noches. Say buenos días. Muy bien. You could also say to somebody you probably will see tomorrow, you could say hasta mañana, hasta mañana, see you tomorrow, which is until tomorrow, literally, idiomatically is hasta mañana. Oh, hasta mañana. You could also say, nos vemos mañana. We'll see each other tomorrow. Nos vemos mañana. O, oh, hasta mañana. Nice. Hasta mañana. Until tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Bien. You could say, hasta luego. See you later. We'll see each other later. Hasta luego. Let's break this word. Luego. Later. Luego is lu, like going to the loo in England. You're going to the loo, remember that? Lu, e, e, like elephant, that e, elephant. Okay, first, bathroom in England, lu, animal in Africa, e, elephant. Get out, go, see, lu, e, Go. Lu, elephant, go. Lue, go. Muy bien. I, um, I put a lot of emphasis because I have students and they use a logo, logo, y lego. They end up saying lego. It's not lego, it's luego. Muy bien. Por eso, I'm insisting. That's why. Okay. You may ask, some, ask somebody, how did she or he sleep? No? ¿Cómo dormiste? <laughs> ¿Cómo dormiste? But maybe if the person looks like very tired or didn't sleep, maybe you don't ask that question. But if it's not, if it's natural circumstances, then say, ¿Cómo dormiste? ¿Cómo dormiste? How did you sleep? Uh, I have a, a story about this. I was a, at a hotel with my mom and um, there was like this dentist congregation and they arrived in the first day and they were all like, Oh, serious, professional, like talking about dentistry, right? Okay, well, the night was pure chaos. I complained because it was crazy. I'm not going to tell you because it's gross. But the next day, I was very happy because I was in the restaurant. Like pretty much we were like two people because they all slept in. Why? Well, guess why? Hmm? Too much partying. See? How did you sleep? ¿Cómo dormiste? So if I have encountered a dentist that day and say, I'm not going to ask him ¿Cómo dormiste? Because I know he didn't sleep or if he did, he probably didn't have the best sleep and I'm not interested also because I was upset. ¿Cómo dormiste? But you can ask a person. How did you sleep? ¿Cómo dormiste? Ah, bien. O más o menos. O, no muy bien. Not very well. 
Oh, muy bien, gracias por preguntar. Thank you for asking. I'm going to think about it. Lo voy a pensar. I'm going to think about it. Lo voy a pensar. Ah, lo voy a pensar. When, like, in any circumstance that you need to say, I'm going to think about it, lo voy a pensar. La siguiente es, disculpe, which is linked to con permiso, because they sometimes can be, re one can replace the other and like be instead of the other, etc. In fact, I have a lesson about the differences of this disculpe and con permiso, but here I'll give you a shortened version of that class, which is disculpe is like when you want to ask a question, say disculpe, like excuse me or sorry, I have a question. That's what I wrote it here. Disculpe, ¿le puedo hacer una pregunta? Could I ask you a question? Disculpe, ¿le puedo hacer una pregunta? Con permiso, it's excuse me. When you're going through and it's tight and it's packed, instead of bumping everybody, you could say con permiso, con permiso, con permiso. ¿sí? Or somebody, uh, sometimes they ask uh, if they are entering a place and you're standing there, say con permiso, like excuse me, I'm going to go in. Okay? Con permiso. You are more interested in learning more differences about lo siento, disculpe, and con permiso. Watch my lesson. Disculpe, con permiso. Could I ask you a question? ¿Le puedo hacer una pregunta? Muy bien. We finished these short words, let's say short phrases, and we're going to go to the next ones, which are a bit you like also useful and a bit more complicated. Bueno, entonces seguimos. Y para despertar, let's just slap ourselves to we, we wake up. Wake up, wake up that you're learning Spanish. Wake up, despierta, despierta, despierta. Aprende español, aprende español, aprende español, despierta. Muy bien. La siguiente es, es larga, it's long, but it's important. Pero es importante. Y quiere decir, I am staying at a house or at an apartment, at a hotel, at a hostel or with a friend. Now, often... When you are away, you're not staying at home. So, but of course, there are people who go away and have houses. In fact, por ejemplo, Tulum, Tulum, yes, um, people buy houses there. Millions of dollars, houses, and they don't know that there's no sewer. Mm -hmm. But, so, in, if you don't have a house abroad, then you're probably staying at a hotel, at a hostel, or at an apartment. And the way you say, you're not going to say vivo because you don't live there, right? You're just staying there. You cannot say vivo en el hotel tal. That's not the case. So you're going to say, me estoy quedando, which is I am staying. Me estoy you see the double E here, we're going to say it, me estoy. So we're not going to really link this in one, but we're going to make this and this a long one. Me estoy quedando, me estoy quedando en una casa, at a house, en una casa, at a house. You could say, me estoy quedando en un departamento. Sí, renté un departamento, maybe, I rented an apartment. You could also say, me estoy quedando en el hotel, and the name of the hotel, en el hotel Buena Vista, you know, good view, Buena Vista, many of them probably, en el hotel Buena Vista. But if you don't want to say what hotel you're staying at, for obvious reasons, for your own security, you can just say at a hotel, en un hotel. So instead of el, we're going to say en Un hotel, ¿no? To make it just, en un hotel, what hotel? Ay, no importa. ¿Eh? ¿Qué importa? Doesn't matter. ¿Qué importa? You could say, en el hostal. En el hostal, en the name of the hostel. But if you don't want to say the name of the hostel, then we're going to say, en un hostal, ¿no? Because you don't want to say the name of the hostel. So you're going to say, en un hostal. Or you could say, me estoy quedando with a friend. Con un amigo, con una amiga, if it's a girl, con una amiga. Muy bien, entonces puedes decir, me estoy quedando en una casa, 
me estoy quedando en un departamento, me estoy quedando en un hotel, me estoy quedando en un hostal, me estoy quedando con un amigo. Muy bien, ahora ya sabes cómo decir I'm staying, because why? You don't live, you're staying there. Now, the way you give addresses in Spanish, see, it's a bit different than in English. For instance, you say, my address is, la dirección es, my address is, you can say, my address is, mi dirección es, mi dirección es, or the address is, la dirección es, if you just want to say the address is, la, instead of me, my, the. La dirección es, my address is, mi dirección es. Muy bien. And you can, or you could say, the address where I'm staying, right? So you will say, the address where I, of the place where I am staying, la dirección del lugar donde me estoy quedando es la dirección del lugar donde me estoy quedando es. Hmm? So you have these two choices. My address is, the address is, or the whole thing. La dirección del lugar donde me estoy quedando es. And you're going to say the address this way. Calle, calle, and you say the name of the street, of the calle. Benito Juárez, I wrote just whatever. Calle, I don't know, Italia. Calle, I don't know, whatever the, the name of the street is, calle. Then you're going to say número, number, número de la calle, right? The address on the street, número. Then you're going to say apartment number, departamento cinco, ¿sí? You're going to say, maybe if you need it, postal code, código postal. Then you just put the postal code, postal code, código postal. You could also say the borough, the neighborhood, colonia. We say in Mexico, colonia. You could say the city where you're staying, if that you need it, ciudad and estado. What, I'm, what I didn't write here like all like, like this, the name of the street, is because what I'm trying to illustrate here is that in Spanish, what you're going to do is calle tal, número tal, departamento número tal, ciudad tal, estado, like state or, or, or provincia tal, región tal. Like everything is, you know, in English, you can, you say number first and one, three, two, seven, whatever street, queen and king, like typical streets. Uh, uh, the duchess, whatever, this, we don't do that. We say calle, and then the number of the calle. Número, número. Colonia, colonia, see? ¿Sí? So you, you have to write that, that way. When you say it too, calle tal, número tal. Muy bien. La siguiente es, ¿cuál es la intersección? Often if you order a service or you're giving the address to somebody, you have to give the main intersection. En español we say, ¿Cuál es la intersección? ¿Cuál es la intersección? And you could say between the street, this, the name of the street, and this, the name of the street, ¿sí? Entre la calle tal y la calle tal, ¿sí? Entre la calle Benito Juárez y la calle Cristóbal Colón. You could say entre Cristóbal Colón y Benito Juárez, if they know the area. So you say... ¿Cuál es la intersección? What is the intersection? And then entre la calle, between... Oh, be... Boom, Ana, cometiste un error. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, well, you know, granted, I am not a native English speaker, so people make mistakes between the street tal and tal, right? I'm doing it literally, not idiomatically. Between, you would say in English, I guess, between Charlotte Street and Empress Street, etc. Sorry, it's between. Got it, got it. Good, I caught it, huh? Otherwise, you'll be like, oh, I'm not going to learn Spanish with Anna because she doesn't speak English well. <laughs> that would be a good excuse. Anyway, but I do write in Spanish well. So, I make mistakes in Spanish, because huh? I teach Spanish. Muy bien. 
So don't, don't lose trust in me because my Spanish is good. Muy bien. Now, la siguiente es, por aquí está bien. Uh, where would you use that phrase? You see, that phrase, you will use it when you, for example, get in a cab and you want that cab driver to leave you around here. Not right here, because you don't say, aquí, aquí, aquí. See, ya, yeah, listo. No, you can say, around here. Por aquí está bien. See? If you are finding your spot on the beach, you want to sit where, like, the perfect spot, you find it. So, finally, you find it. You say, mm, por aquí está bien. Around here is good. You, you can use that phrase in many contexts. Por aquí está bien. You could say, por ejemplo, por aquí, by itself, por aquí, por aquí, this way, this way, por aquí. Muy bien. Now, unfortunately, in many Latin American countries, and I mean, I haven't traveled uh, much, I mean, at all in Latin America, but it, I, f I have the feeling that they are kind of Mexico in, a way, in one way or another. That we kind of share certain traits. <laughs> so it's going to be hard to find an address, right? Especially in, I don't know, in some places more than in others. So you could say, I cannot find the address, uh, Charlotte. Say to your friend Charlotte. You can say, Charlotte, I cannot find the address, dear. And you say, no encuentro la dirección. Or you, I cannot find the place. You know, Charlotte, where are you? I can't find the address, dear. You can say, so you say, no encuentro la dirección. O no encuentro el lugar, the place. Muy bien. Now, maybe you're interested in somebody you just spoke to or you know or whoever is from here, from the region where you are. And that you're going to say, are you from here? ¿Eres de aquí? You can say, no, no soy de aquí. O, sí, soy de aquí. Muy bien. Bueno, vamos a las siguientes, a las siguientes oraciones. La siguiente oración has to do with when you want to make a reservation and you want to say for how many people, at what time and what day. So, we'll say, ¿Puedo hacer una reservación? Could I make a reservation? ¿Puedo hacer una reservación? Me voy a mi mano. Ah, la mano, más fácil. ¿Puedo hacer una reservación? But maybe you already want to give all the information. So, could I make a reservation? Or maybe it's like, could I make a reservation for tonight, for tomorrow, for Sunday at 5 p.m. for two people, por ejemplo? So, you could say, ¿Puedo hacer una reservación para hoy, for today, para hoy, para mañana? for tomorrow, or for any day of the week, para el domingo, no, para el lunes, para el martes, para el miércoles, para el jueves, para el viernes, para el sábado, o para el domingo. Or if, if the day is not really this week, then you may want to have, give the, um, the date. So you say, para el 28 de mayo, for May 28th, ¿No? Para el 28 de mayo, that's what we say, para el 28 de mayo. Muy bien. A las 7 de la noche, for 7 o'clock, 7 p.m. probably, right? You're not going to make a reservation for breakfast. I mean, I don't know, maybe, I don't know, I've never done it. A las 7 de la noche, for two people, para dos personas. So you could see here we use a lot the preposition para, ¿no? Para hoy. Para dos personas, ¿sí? Puedo hacer una reservación para hoy, ¿no? At 7 p.m. para dos personas. What if it's 7.30? You would say 7 y media, like 7 and a half. 7 y media. I'm going to write it here so you see it. 7 y media. Y media. 7 y media, ¿no? And a half, maybe, because maybe you're... Maybe your, your time is not exact. Muy bien. Para hoy for two people. Perfecto. You could say another expression. You say, una mesa para dos personas. A table for two. For two persons. For two people. 
una mesa para dos personas. That's where you get to a restaurant or wherever you're going to eat. You say, una mesa para dos personas. Now, that's probably a formal context. If it's an informal place, you could say, oh, we're two. Somos dos, ¿no? Somos dos, we are two. Somos cuatro. We're four. Somos cuatro. Or you could ask, a table for, una mesa para, again, la preposición para, don't forget, para dos personas. O simplemente somos dos. La siguiente oración es, when, when maybe you are at a restaurant already, you want the server to bring you some more or of something. So you'll say, me puede traer, could you bring me, me puede traer, and you say whatever you want him or, or her to, to bring you. So you say, me puede traer hielo, ice, agua, water, or another, otro, and you show it with your face, like otro, another marker, I'm saying, otro plumón, no? Or you could say, me puede traer otro, that's why the server is already looking at what I want, what of, uh, what, what another is. <laughs> otro, este, you could say otro vino, otro botella de agua, You could say also, because maybe you want more, so you could say, me puede traer más, más, con acento aquí, más agua, more water, más hielo, no, más or of whatever you want. Me puede traer más hielo, más agua, o me puede traer hielo o agua, por favor, don't forget to say por favor, no, no, que no se te olvide decir por favor, no, porque no vas a ser así grosero. En el restaurante, no está bien ser grosero. La siguiente oración es, ¿puedo ordenar para llevar? Could I order takeout? Para llevar. Para llevar is takeout. It's like, let's say, literally is to bring. Could I order to bring? <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to eat it there, right? So you say, ¿puedo ordenar para llevar? But maybe you want to order delivery. In which case you would say, ¿puedo ordenar? Para, per, sorry, no para, you say, puedo ordenar. I just didn't have a lot of space, so I didn't want to write it in the next. Puedo ordenar servicio, so we'll erase this. Puedo ordenar servicio or entrega a domicilio. ¿Sí? Literally, you're saying, can I order service or delivery to the address? That's the to an address, that's what you're literally translating into. But idiomatically, you see, could I order delivery? We say, puedo ordenar servicio, service, servicio. Don't get scared about all these I's. Servicio, no? Servicio a domicilio. O puedo ordenar entrega a domicilio. You could use servicio or entrega. It's up to you. Both are understood by native Spanish speakers, a domicilio. They are going to answer sí o no, depende. The way you ask for a bill, you're going to say, la cuenta, por favor, la cuenta, por favor, la cuenta, por favor. You could, another way to say la cuenta, if it's not in a formal context, then it's a more like, you know, you're standing or you're sitting, but it's not really like a formal restaurant. It's, it's more casual. You could say, ¿cuánto debo? How much do I owe? No? I'm, I'm imagining if you're at a stand, you know, I'm imagining when I go to buy gorditas o quesadillas. Oh, las de frijoles, tan grandotas, así. No le voy a decir, lo cuento, por favor. Why? Because there are like two women making their quesadillas in their, on the street, right? I'm just sitting there at a... Or a little bench. So I'm not going to say, la cuenta, por favor. Maybe if I order a lot, I say, la cuenta. No, because it's for my nephew, for my other nephew, for my sister, right? But I could also say, how much do I owe? Cuánto debo? Cuánto debo? How much I owe? How much do I owe? No, it's a, depending, right? Formal or informal, you say, la cuenta o cuánto debo? If you are asking for the price of something, you'll say, cuánto cuesta? Cuánto cuesta? You're not going to say cuánto debo, right? Because that's just at the end, and in general, it tends to be in the food context. So you're only going to say cuánto cuesta. Cuánto cuesta? Cuesta. Muy bien. 
La siguiente es, maybe you're walking around and you want to see the menu of the place you liked for later. So you could say, puedo ver la carta, puedo ver la carta. Is could I see the menu? You could say, puedo ver el menú. But often you'll see la carta, no, la carta, la carta. Puedo ver la carta. Carta is also a letter. So when you say, oh, I recibí una carta de la escuela. I received a letter from the school. In this case, you're not talking about that letter. You're talking about the menu. Puedo ver la carta. Could I see the menu? No. Now, if you want to talk about the weather, maybe your family back home is asking you, how's the weather? So you say, hace calor o hace frío. No. O hace mucho calor, to be more dramatic. O hace mucho frío, to be more dramático. Muy bien, puede ser hace calor, hace frío. Or you could state the exact circumstances. You could say, it is raining, está lloviendo, lloviendo. Let's go ahead slowly, lentamente, para que aprendas español. Es muy importante pronunciar todas las vocales y todas las letras. Yo vi en do. Yo bien do. ¿Ok? Está lloviendo. Muy bien. Larga, ¿no? Don't try to shorten it. Está nublado. It is cloudy. Está nublado. Está nublado, hace frío. Está lloviendo, hace calor. O oh, I forgot to say, está soleado. Maybe because I take it for granted. <laughs> you would say, hace calor, está rico, no está sabroso. Me encanta el clima de aquí. I love the weather here. Muy bien. Bueno, vamos a las siguientes, a las últimas oraciones y ya, listo. Estás listo para irte de vacaciones a cualquier lugar. Bueno, muy bien. Ya casi terminamos. We're almost done. Let's go over the last sentences. Vamos a revisar las últimas oraciones. Well, we couldn't miss about the Wi-Fi, right? Now it's like everywhere you go, you want to be connected. The way you ask if they have Wi-Fi, you'll say, ¿Tienes internet o tienes Wi-Fi? Now, many people say Wi-Fi, but a lot of people also say Wi-Fi. And it's a, a term that has become part of the Spanish, I think, anywhere you are. So you could say, do you have, tienes internet o tienes Wi-Fi o tienes Wi-Fi? Depends. You can pick. Both are correct, Wi-Fi or Wi-Fi. En español, we have taken your term. We borrowed it. It's a borrowing. Like uh, in the translation of field is called a borrowing. Muy bien. Do you have Wi-Fi? Now you want to say, what's the password? ¿Cuál es la clave, la clave o la contraseña? La clave and la contraseña are the same. It's the password. So it's la clave o la contraseña. You may hear or see this one of these words, which means the password. ¿Cuál es la clave del Wi-Fi? O ¿cuál es la clave, cuál es la contraseña del Wi-Fi? See, whatever you want. Oye, después, oye, disculpa, ¿cuál es la clave del Wi-Fi? Oye, ¿cuál es la clave, la contraseña del Wi-Fi? So you could use la clave o la contraseña, either or are both correct. Muy bien. La siguiente es, ¿cuál es el nombre de la red? Which is the, what's the network, right? Because you see all these networks, so you want to ask, ¿cuál es el nombre de la red? ¿Cuál es el nombre de la red? Red. What's, what is the name of the network? Entonces ya sabes, si quieres ir a un lugar, you may want to go to a place to work for a little bit or just to check your emails or to check something. So you could say, ¿Tienes internet? Because maybe it depends whether you're going to stay or leave or, or stay at that place or not. If they have internet, you'll stay. If they don't, then you move to a different place. ¿Tienes internet o tienes Wi-Fi? ¿Cuál es la clave del Wi-Fi? ¿Cuál es la contraseña del Wi-Fi? Let's repeat this word. Con, tra, se, ña, ña, ña. 
contraseña del Wi-Fi. Muy bien. ¿Cuál es el nombre de la red? Perfecto. Seguimos. Maybe you don't have signal. No tengo señal. You don't have signal. You don't have cell phone signal. You're like, and you don't have cell phone signal. So you ask like a different a person next to you, like, ¿tienes señal? Because maybe it's, nobody has it, but maybe it's only you, solamente tú. You're going to ask, vas a preguntar, ¿tienes señal? Do you have signal? ¿Tienes señal? Do you have signal? Muy bien. La siguiente is when you want to ask for somebody to borrow something. You use the verb prestar. Me prestas. Could you lend me or could I borrow? They are both equivalent to me prestas. And what? Here I wrote a pen, un bolígrafo, o una pluma, as we Mexicans say, pluma, or like the, the, the pen. Bolígrafo, more like standardized term. Bolígrafo o pluma. ¿Me prestas un bolígrafo? ¿Me prestas una pluma? How many times have you asked? Well, I have asked a lot for a piece of paper to write some things. Like, ¿me prestas un pedazo de papel? Oye, ¿me prestas un pedazo de papel y una pluma? ¿Sí? <laughs> so you could ask, ¿me prestas? Could you borrow? Or could they lend you something with this verb? ¿Me prestas? Could you lend me? Could I borrow? ¿Me prestas? And what? Whatever you need. Muy bien. And for that, we probably got to do Google Translate because I cannot cover all the terms that exist. Muy bien, that you can borrow. Muy bien. And don't forget to return it. ¿Eh? Y regrésalo, porque eso de que me prestas and then you disappear, that's not nice, is it? Bueno, very important. You say, ¿dónde está el baño? <laughs> Where is the bathroom, right? It's like, ¿dónde está el baño? Where is the bathroom? Very important. You always want to locate the bathroom, especially if you're on holiday in Mexico. Don't forget that. So, you go to a place first. Before you go to the, the, the table, you're going to say, ¿dónde está el baño? So you already have it located, so you don't have to run into trouble later when you finish eating in Mexico. Bueno, la siguiente es, where can I find an ATM? ¿Dónde hay un cajero? Well, these days, a lot of people pay con tarjetas de crédito, tarjetas de débito, etc. Pero mucha gente utiliza efectivo, cash. Si necesitas un cajero, Puedes preguntar, you can ask, ¿dónde hay un cajero? Where can I find an ATM? Muy bien, ¿dónde hay un cajero? Cajero, it's also a cashier, a male cashier, the one that is at the cashier, tuk, 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 cashing you out, es un cajero también. Ok, so think about the ATM like a, a man uh, that is cashing you out there. Muy bien, because it's also used like that. Now, this is important, number 45. Why? Because it's a very, um, how to say, idiomatic thing. We ask, until what time do you stay open? That's the way we generally ask. Many ways to ask, but this is a general way to ask. ¿Hasta qué hora está abierto? ¿Hasta qué hora está abierto? ¿Hasta qué hora? Until what time do you, let's say, Are you open? Until what time are you open? It's like, until what time do you, like, are you still open? No? Until what time do you stay open? Like, give me the maximum. Okay? Hasta qué hora está abierto? You could also say, a qué hora cierran, of course. O a qué, a qué hora cierran, o a qué hora abren. Or what time do you open, or what time do you close? But you could say, hasta qué hora está abierto? Thinking how long you're going to have, right? So to return, maybe later. Now, maybe you want to ask for recommendations. Many people like to ask locals or other travelers for recommendations. In that, uh, speaking of it, you could ask, ¿Me recomiendas algún lugar? Do you recommend me a place? Maybe you want to say a place to eat. ¿Me recomiendas algún lugar para comer? ¿Sí? O para bailar, maybe that person knows already many places. So you could ask, ¿me recomiendas un lugar para comer, para cenar, para bailar, to dance? You could ask for a place for you know, doing whatever you want to do, the, the activity you're interested in doing. So you say, ¿me recomiendas algún lugar? 
that by itself is, could you recommend me a place? Do you recommend me a place? You know, here, around here, a place you like. Maybe it's like a restaurant, maybe it's a river, maybe it's something that you, the, the other person like that you're asking. Oh, me recomiendas algún lugar? Because maybe that person is on the way out, you're the way in. Muy bien. Now, this is short, but handy. And that's the most important thing, because when you're traveling, you want things that are short and handy, right? Because you're not, let's say you're not so comfortable with the language yet. So you have, the, oh, short, great. No, la voy a usar. ¿Qué es? And then you point at the thing, right? Maybe you're watching, like you're looking at a menu. Say, ¿qué es eh, calabaza? No? What is, like, ¿qué es calabaza? And then the server will tell you. Or any term that you don't understand. No? Instead of saying, ¿qué significa? What does it mean? You could say, ¿qué es? No? To ask for the definition. And quite handy and short. ¿Qué es? ¿Qué es? And then you point your finger at the thing. Okay? Or you could try to say it too. Remember that in Spanish we pronounce every single letter and vowel. So maybe you want to watch my lesson about the alphabet. Muy bien. Now, you could say, muchas gracias por todo. Muchas gracias por todo. Thanks for everything. Maybe you want to thank that person or a place for everything they do to make your holiday great. So you could say, Muchas gracias por todo. Thank you for everything. Muchas gracias por todo. No? Muchas gracias por todo. You could continue. I had a good time. La pasé muy bien. La pasé muy bien. En España, I think they say lo pasé. Instead of the A, they say lo pasé muy bien. We don't say that. We say la pasé muy bien. And I think in general in America, we say la pasé muy bien. La pasamos muy bien. If it's not only you, if it's a group of people, right? Like, or, or at least more, more than you, not only one person. You say, la pasamos muy bien. La pasé muy bien. You could say, la pasé muy mal. But then you wouldn't say, muchas gracias por todo, because it's bad. So you wouldn't even say, thank you, right? So you say, la pasé muy mal. La pasamos muy mal. I hope not. But it happens. Now, the last one would be, espero, I hope, esperamos, we hope, espero volver pronto. I hope to be back soon. O esperamos volver pronto. We hope to be back soon. And I hope to be back soon to teach you more Spanish. Sí, espero verte pronto porque quiero enseñarte más español. Recuerda, remember that my name is Ana. Soy Ana. I am Mexican, soy mexicana, and I am a Spanish teacher. Y soy maestra de español desde hace muchos años. I have my YouTube channel, Butterfly Spanish, where I teach Spanish to everybody who want to learn Spanish in the world for free. You can watch my lessons. I have lessons about every topic in Spanish, many topics. I haven't covered all, but I have lessons about many topics. And I have lessons that are that have been built based on your needs for real life Spanish, for in real life context. Words that we actually say. My motto, <laughs> my motto for my Spanish lessons, my ideology is that I'm not going to teach you vocabulary expressions or grammar that is no longer in use because I want you to get I, I want you to learn Spanish. I want you to speak Spanish. I want you to, to move, you know, to move upwards towards conquering Spanish. And that's what my channel is about, about real life and up-to-date Spanish. If you are more interested in my lessons, you can browse my channel on YouTube or you can go to my website, butterflyspanish.com. I also send a newsletter once in a while, sometimes more often, sometimes not, depends. Um, and, and it's not really a newsletter, it's a long article about something I've written related to Spanish. So if you're interested in learning more, you know, about social things, about political things, not political really, but about interesting things that are related to learning Spanish and that will like help you learning more, not only about the language, but about the culture, then you may want to subscribe. You can do so at butterflyspanish.com. You could 
Also watch some other of my lessons. And if you like my lessons and would like to donate to my channel so I continue to make more lessons, you can do it at my website too, butterflyspanish.com. Muchas gracias. I'm not going to bore you with more information. I like to stay in camera so I could be like talking all day. <laughs> but I won't because I know you should watch another lesson which is with a different topic and keep learning in Spanish. Por el momento, muchas gracias y nos vemos pronto. Espero verte pronto. Adiós.